Hello, uh, this is Dr. Mahesh Kalan Shetty, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Valchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. In this session, we will discuss about the evaluation of uh, soil strength parameters by triaxial shear test. The learning outcome will be at the end of this session, students will be able to perform the triaxial shear test to evaluate soil strength parameters that is cohesion and soil internal friction angle. Now the determination of strength parameters basically we have two approaches one is a laboratory test and another is a field test. So in the laboratory test uh, these are the some important tests which are performed such as a direct box shear test and triaxial shear test whereas uh, on the field we can perform these four tests wind shear test, pressure meter, static cone penetrometer and standard penetration test. So in this session now we will focus on the triaxial shear test. Now uh, in the laboratory first of all we need to uh, uh, prepare a representative soil sample that we call it as a remolded soil sample. So this is how the soil sample is uh, remolded and the cylindrical specimen is prepared. So initially there is no stress and then we will apply the uh, stress to this soil sample to simulate a field condition and then we make the soil to fail. Now, Based on our approach, there are two methods. So if I apply the additional vertical stress and cause the failure, then that concept is used in the triaxial shear test. And if I apply the horizontal force and if I make the soil to fail, that particular approach is used in the direct shear test. So today, now let us focus on the triaxial shear test. So this is what is a uh, triaxial mold or triaxial cell within which the soil sample is placed. So first of all we need to prepare this particular setup where at the center you can see the soil sample, cylindrical soil sample and then we uh, you can see certain uh, arrangement here uh, the two tubes you can see one is at top and one is at bottom. These two tubes are used to measure the pore pressure. So these particular pipes are to be connected to a pore pressure measurement unit. Then this in this cell the fluid is uh, filled usually the water is used and then uh, we have one more arrangement here uh, to apply the pressure. So there is a uh, loading unit and through this loading unit we apply the pressure to this uh, water and uh, this particular pressure we call it as a confining pressure which is present all along the soil sample. So the basically in this experiment we are supposed to apply the confining pressure first and then we have to apply a vertical additional stress that we call it as a deviatoric stress and we go on increasing this vertical stress till the failure takes place. So this is what is the basic concept in the triaxial shear test. Now the soil sample preparation you can see now this is a typical setup of the triaxial uh, test. This is a loading frame and where you can see at the center the triaxial mold. Uh, such kind of sampling tubes you may use which are brought from the laboratories and from the sampling tubes the samples are extracted using the ex extruder. Then it is placed in this uh, particular mold because we need a cylindrical specimen. Then the trimming is done and you see this sample is placed here in the mold. So this is how the sample is to be placed and then um, a rubber membrane is used here okay, just to avoid the reaction of water with the soil and then, then this assembly is prepared. So you can see this uh, mold which is uh, partially filled with water right and then this complete portion is to be filled with water and you can see some arrangement here. So these all arrangements are to develop the pressure and to measure the uh, pore pressure which is developed. So this is a typical uh, setup uh, where you can see this mold already placed here and the soil sample is here at the center and then uh, we start the machine. So first of all before we apply the vertical pressure we need to apply the horizontal pressure that is confining pressure. So that confining pressure is uh, applied with the help of the pressure unit uh, that is of known magnitude and then we apply we start the motor and we start applying the vertical force. Now whatever vertical stress or vertical force is applied that can be measured in this brewing ring. So we uh, keep on continuing this load till the failure takes place. So this uh, 
concept is explained here. So, the first stage is all round pressure as uh, we have seen in the previous slide. So, a soil sample subjected to all round pressure and then we apply the deviatoric stress, additional vertical stress, it is called as deviatoric stress. And then uh, at one particular value, the soil sample fails. So, we have a, a set of sigma 3 and sigma 1. So, this horizontal pressure is a sigma 3 everywhere. So, here everywhere the pressure is sigma 3 and here on the right hand side the sigma 3 is already present and in a vertical direction some increase in the stress has taken place. So, that sigma 3 plus delta sigma gives me sigma 1 that is called major principal stress. So, the major principal stress is acting in a vertical direction, minor principal stress is acting in a horizontal direction. So, using this sigma 1 and sigma 3, we can draw the Mohr's circle. So, here at the bottom you see at on the right hand side, uh, sorry left hand side, uh, on x axis the stress is, uh, normal stress is uh, plotted and on y axis the shear stress is plotted. So, the first circle you can see, the first Mohr circle corresponding to first trial because sigma 1 and sigma 3 are known to us. Then we go for a second trial where we increase this confining pressure we increase the confining pressure and for that we find what is the extra vertical stress required. So, in this case we get another set of sigma 1 and sigma 3 of course of higher magnitude. So, corresponding Mohr circle will draw. So, the second Mohr circle you can see this second Mohr circle is corresponding to second trial. Then we go for a third trial. We increase the confining pressure again and again we apply the stress. So, we find another value of sigma 1. So, a new setup of sigma 1 and sigma 3 is developed. So, that is used and again a number of more circles are plotted like this. So, usually uh, the four trials are desired. So, therefore, you can see the four more circles we get. So, once we get the more circle, then the, the common tangent line need to be drawn here. And this common tangent line is nothing but a failure envelope. The moment I get a failure envelope, I can find out the intercept on a vertical axis that we call it as a cohesion and the inclination of this line with the horizontal is called as a friction angle. So, on the right hand side also you can see a straight line developed that is nothing but the failure envelope. So, this is how the failure envelope is developed in the laboratory using triaxial shear test. So, let us have a review questions quickly go through this take a pause answer it and resume the video. The two questions I have posted, the main advantage of triaxial compression test is four options and the second one is strength envelope of purely cohesive soil is four options. Take a pause and get the answer. Okay, so these are the answers. The first question was the main advantage of triaxial compression test is the failure takes place on weakest plane, complete control over drainage condition and stress distribution on failure plane is uniform. So, these all are the advantages. So, therefore, the answer will be all of these and the strength envelope of purely cohesive soil is uh, horizontal because we know that uh, phi is 0 therefore, the strength envelope becomes horizontal. So, these are some drainage conditions which are uh, used uh, in the triaxial test. In fact, this is a advantage of the triaxial test because we can conduct the experiment under different drainage conditions. The three major drainage conditions are used. One is called uh, unconsolidated undrained test that is UU. Second one is a uh, consolidated drained test which is called CU and third one is a uh, consolidated uh, drain test that is called CD. So, in UU test what happens that the cell pressure is applied without allowing drainage and then uh, keeping all pressure constant deviatoric stress is increased to failure without drainage. So, drainage is not allowed throughout the process. In the second step, consolidated undrained test, here the drainage is allowed during the cell pressure application, right. So, initially uh, when the cell pressure is applied, the drainage is allowed and then when the shearing takes place, at that time the drainage is not allowed. So, it is called undrained, so consolidated undrained test. And third one is the most realistic method, it is called consolidated drained test, where the consolidation is allowed when the confining pressure is applied and at the same time during the shearing also the drainage is allowed. So, this is most realistic, but uh, it, it takes a lot of time. It's, okay. 
So UU test is a relatively quick test and a, a CD test is a, a time consuming one, but it is more accurate. Then uh, now this uh, conditions you can see here now the drainage conditions we can understand from this slide. In the first step, the confining pressure is applied and then under all round confining pressure is applied here, then, then during this process if the drainage is allowed or not. If it is allowed, then it is consolidated. If it is not allowed, then it is unconsolidated. Then the second stage is the application of the deviatrix stress here and making the soil to fail. Now during this process, during the shearing, if you are allowing the drainage or not, based on that also we have two options. If the drainage wall is open, it means if you are allowing a drainage, it is called as a drained loading. If you are not allowing, it is called undrained loading. So based on this, we can have this particular test. Say as I told, uh, in the first step, if suppose the drainage is uh, allowed, then it is consolidated and during the shearing also, if the drainage is uh, not allowed, then it is undrained. So therefore, it is called CU test, consolidated undrained test, the blue line indicates. Then uh, uh, if it is consolidated uh, and then uh, during the shearing, if the drainage is allowed, then it is called CD test which is shown in red color. And if suppose the drainage is not at all allowed during the first stage as well as second stage, then it is unconsolidated undrained loading. So the green color indicates UU test. References which are used. Thank you. Thank you very much.